Apache Linux is a great security focused operating system. I use it on my home network occasionally for security testing my machines. One of the cool things that Offensive Security does as a company, um, that's the company who develops Kali Linux, uh, is they provide VM images on their website to make setting it up so much easier. They even have one that'll work with KVM. This is B from Taytalk Tech, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Kali Linux and KVM the easy way, so stick with me. I have a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it. Let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts in the comment section below. And lastly, make sure you stick around all the way to the end to get the most out of this video. Let's do this thing. All right. So let me go ahead and shrink my face down here so we can go ahead and get into the content. All right, there we go. All right, so one of the things I want to lead off with is that this method does not only work with Kali Linux. It, it works with any operating system where you are using a QCOW2 disk image. Now, what is a QCOW2, QCOW2 disk image? It's the format of KVM virtual disk images. Uh, I've covered that in the storage portion of this series, so go back and check that video out if you want to know more. All right, so... Moving on, now to start with, we're going to need to install 7-zip and we're going to need to download the QCOW disk image from Kali.org. So let's go ahead and start with um, installing 7-zip. It's a pretty easy process. We're gonna do sudo apt install and then the package is going to be p7-zip. And if you're doing this on a Red Hat or Fedora system, it'll just be dnf instead of apt. Right, it's actually already installed on my system, so we don't need to worry about installing it again. So now I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. Now, let me show you something here before we actually download the image. So here is a wonderful thing that, that Offensive Security also does for us, is they provide these pre-built virtual machines, which is it's it's already configured, it's already set up. You When you set it up, you may just have to update the packages and that's going to be it and it comes with a default username and password uh if you do if you do uh, when you do set this up if you're using kali make sure you update the password for the default user you could honestly probably just create a user for yourself and then delete that users would be the best practice but um just keep that in mind you can do whatever works best for you but it's pretty easy to actually download the disk image what you're going to do is you would just if you were using a if you were using a um, an actual GUI is you would just push, you would click on this logo right here, this little this little guy right here to download. But we're not doing that. We're doing this all from the command line for this video in this series. So we're going to go ahead and uh, right click on it. We're going to click copy link. And then we're going to go back over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a um, wget. And then we're going to go ahead and just do a double quote. And then we're going to paste it in there. And then we're going to do a double quote to close it. And that's going to download it into this directory. It is going to take a minute to download, uh, just because it is a 2.8 gigabyte, uh, 2.8 gigabyte uh, file size. So let's go ahead and do that. But now, um, well, um, be, I'm, I'll probably end up having to pause the video while it downloads. But I wanted to just go ahead and say that this website that we just talked about, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to include the direct link that I downloaded here, uh, which will probably be valid for a little while. I, I can't, like, honestly, it just depends. Like, they don't. They do a rolling release, but it's it's a little bit different than other rolling releases. Um, like right now, they're on I think 2023.2, I believe is the one that they're on, and I believe that indicates that this is the second version for 2023. But um, so it, it, this in the future, this will change at some point in time. So the link that's directly to the disk image that will only be that will only be um, valid for a period of time and. But what I'll do is I'm going to include that link down in the comments, but I'm also going to include the um, the link to this website right here. And I shouldn't say the comments. I should say the show notes. So, yeah, that will be down below. Uh, but let's go ahead and see if it's finished downloading, which it's almost done. We're at 80%. It should just take, like, it looks like it's only going to take another 12, 11, almost about 10 seconds left. So we'll go ahead and just let that finish without pausing the video here. Let it do its thing. All right, see, and we can see how big that file is. It's a pretty decent sized file. You know, it's like down, downloading an ISO image, but we'll go ahead and get something. Uh, we'll go ahead and see something else here once we actually um, um, uncomp um, uncompress it. So this was in the, um, 
the um, file was compressed with 7-zip. So what we're going to do is we're going to use 7-zip to actually decompress it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do um, 7-zr. Now, if you're doing this on Red Hat or Fedora, what you're going to do is you would just do uh, 7-za. Uh, it's the same command, just with an A instead of the R. And then we'll do an E for um, for uh, to extract. And then we're going to go ahead and do Kali. Right there we go. We've got that one there. And this will take a little bit of time because I'm going to let you know is that this is a 13 gigabyte file. So it's going to take it's going to take some time, probably two to three minutes to go ahead and extract. Um, depending on, you know, how powerful your computer is. Um, I, I just did like a short about my home server and it's got a uh, Ryzen 7 5700G in there, which is relatively modern. I think it's from like 2020 or 2021. So we're looking at a two to three year old processor, you know, relatively like last gen, most recent gen of APUs if we're just looking at that. But um, yeah, so it'll take some time, but I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video here and I'll be back once it has finished. All right, and it has finished extracting. So let me just go ahead and show you something here. Just assume to ls lh, which is going to show us the long form and the human readable form. 13 gigabytes. Holy shnikes. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> so it's one of the biggest files that I've ever downloaded it and compressed. So absolutely wild. Now, the last thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go ahead and get that over to our the directory where we keep our images and you can leave it here but keep in mind it's going to leave it here once you actually install it so i like to keep everything organized so we're going to put it over there mine i just leave it in the default location this may not be the case for you so only you know where yours is at we're going to go ahead and put that over here we're going to go ahead and move it so oops got to put a sudo in there and we're going to give it just a second here it'll hang for just a moment while it transfers over even on the same system 13 gigabytes is quite a bit of uh quite a bit of uh, size all right, perfect. So now we've got it over there in that file. So let's go ahead and clear this out. We can actually get into the command. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in here. This is actually the second time that I'm recording this video. Um, this hub that I use for my Mac is not the great, like it's 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 otherly or out, outly world computing, OWC. Um, sometimes things just don't work properly. Like it'll it'll just like if it's been plugged in too long, it'll just not be recognized. And I didn't realize my mic wasn't recognized and I recorded the whole video without any sound. So we're doing it again. So I'm just going to go ahead and just oops, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, if you know any better docs down below for Max, just let me know. I'd be happy to I'd be really I shouldn't say happy. I'd be well, I'd be happy, but I'd also be very grateful if you shared that with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste the command in there. There we go. Let's just go ahead and go through this command here. So we've got sudo, of course, and we got vert install, which is going to help us install. We've got name, which is going to name it Kali test. We've got disk, which is going to set the path to the actual image that we just downloaded. That's where I've got it set. We're going to go ahead and give it two CPU cores with the CPU. We're going to give it four gigabytes of RAM with uh, tech tech memory. We're going to do graphics at DNC. Keep in mind that uh, the default on Debian and Ubuntu is going to be spice. I use VNC. So that's why I selected VNC. If you're on, if you're on Ubuntu or Debian, it's going to be you don't have to put anything if you want to use Spice. But if you want to use VNC, you have to specify VNC. The reverse is the is the, is the the case on Red Hat. Uh, I I'm not sure on Fedora because sometimes like because Fedora is more consumer based versus enterprise based. So sometimes they'll still implement these things on Fedora that they don't put into um, into Red Hat. So um, it, it may vary, and but I, I, I always specify it regardless, just to make sure that I'm getting what I want. All right, now TacTac -tac Network, we're doing, uh, we're just making it a bridge on my local network. If you, you don't have to put this one, because if you do, it'll just do the default uh, virtual um, adapter that'll use NAT through um, through your uh, your system. Then we're gonna set OS info to Debian 11, and then we're gonna do TacTac -tac Import, which is a new one. This one is one of the new ones from that we compared to what we've previously done. Import's going to allow us to um, make this this image into an actual into an actual virtual machine. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Perfect. It's going to start the install and all right. We got to go ahead and go into our. We're going to go into BNC. All right, and look at that. Boom. And one of the things that you want to remember is with Kali, uh, the uh, username, default username, and password is going to be Kali, and then Kali for both. 
just keep in mind you don't want to leave it at that you'll want to go ahead and update that you can either disable you can either i'm sorry you can either, well you could disable the cali user uh password um so where you know make it make it not log in um you know you're i honestly i just or i shouldn't say yeah I, like you can do it that way just make it to where they can't log in um you could also just completely delete them. That's what I usually do. And then just leave myself uh, as a separate user. And then, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty easy. Just make sure I'm in the sudo group and all that stuff. But yeah, it is good to go here. Let's, let's test something out here. Sudo uh, update. So the reason I didn't update it here is because I'm going to be deleting this afterwards. But yeah, see, 963 packages is pretty out of date. But, you know, it's, it's still... Uh, but yeah, let me just show you something real quick here. If you want to go ahead and if you want to go ahead and change the password of Cali, just do Cali. Uh, I'm sorry, just do P A S S W D as you're signing in as Cali, and then it's going to go ahead and have you put in your current password, and then you can put in a new one. Easy enough. So free tip there. Um, this Linux virtualization thing is not so bad once you get the hang of it. Honestly, it's it it still just blows my mind the things that you're. That you're able to do and you know one of the things that most people don't realize about you know inter like uh, cloud services and things like that like they, there's a concept called infrastructure as code so all of this stuff is done is like code you know nobody people aren't running you know there's not a person who just sits there and puts all that in and like there's just there, it, it's basically like a giant script you know it's, it's kind of what code is and it just runs all that stuff anytime that you set it up it's like oh hey this person like this so i'm gonna run this they selected that i'm gonna go ahead and run that and and all that stuff so it's it's wicked 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 cool um but yeah you know check out the other videos in my linux virtualization playlist if you're caught up check out this other video instead uh remember mistakes make you better so keep on making thank you so much for watching my video and have the greatest of days